Today's Bible reading for May 20th. As usual, we'll be reading from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and the Proverbs. We want to complete the whole Bible in one year. So the Old Testament reading is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 26 to chapter 28. Now some men from Ziph came to Saul at Gibeah to tell him, David is hiding on the hill of Hakila, which overlooks Jeshimon. So Saul took 3,000 of Israelites' elite troops and went to hunt him down in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul camped along the roadside beside the hill of Hakila near Jeshimon, where David was hiding. When David learned that Saul had come after him into the wilderness, he sent out spies to verify the report of Saul's arrival. David slipped over to Saul's camp one night to look around. Saul and Abner, son of Ner, the commander of his army, were sleeping inside a ring formed by the slumbering warriors. Who will volunteer to go in there with me? David asked Ahimelech the Hittite and Abishai, son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother. I'll go with you, Abishai replied. So David and Abishai went right into Saul's camp and found him asleep with his spear stuck in the ground beside his head. Abner and the soldiers were lying asleep around him. God has surely handed your enemy over to you this time, Abishai whispered to David. Let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I won't need to strike twice. No, David said, don't kill him. For who can remain innocent after attacking the Lord's anointed one? Surely the Lord will strike Saul down someday or he will die of old age or in battle. The Lord forbid that I should kill the one he has anointed, but take his spear and that jug of water beside his head, and then let's get out of here. So David took the spear and jug of water that were near Saul's head. Then he and Abishai got away without anyone seeing them or even waking up because the Lord had put Saul's men into a deep sleep. David climbed the hill opposite the camp until he was at a safe distance. Then he shouted down to the soldiers and to Abner, son of Ner, Wake up, Abner! Who is it? Abner demanded. Well, Abner, you're a great man, aren't you? David taunted. Where in all Israel is there anyone as mighty? So why haven't you guarded your master, the king, when someone came to kill him? This isn't good at all. I swear by the Lord that you and your men deserve to die because you failed to protect your master, the Lord's anointed. Look around. Where are the king's spear and the jug of water that were beside his head? Saul recognized David's voice and called out, is that you, my son, David? And David replied, Yes, my lord, the king. Why are you chasing me? What have I done? What is my crime? But now, let my lord, the king, listen to his servant. If the lord has stirred you up against me, then let him accept my offering. But if this is simply a human scheme, then... May those involved be caused by the Lord, for they have driven me from my home, so I can no longer live among the Lord's people. And they have said, Go, worship pagan gods. Must I die on foreign soil, far from the presence of the Lord? Why has the king of Israel come out to search for a single flea? Why does he hunt me down like a partridge on the mountains? Then Saul confessed. I have sinned. Come back home, my son. And I will no longer try to harm you, for you valued my life today. 
I have been a fool and very, very wrong. Here is your spear, O king, David replied. Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord gives his own reward for doing good and for being loyal. And I refuse to kill you even when the Lord placed you in my power. For you are the Lord's anointed one. Now, may the Lord value my life even as I have valued yours today. May he rescue me from all my troubles. And Saul said to David, Blessings on you, my son David. You will do many heroic deeds and you will surely succeed. Then David went away and Saul returned home. But David kept thinking to himself, Someday Saul is going to get me. The best thing I can do is escape to the Philistines. Then Saul will stop hunting for me in Israelite territory and I will finally be safe. So David took his 600 men and went over and joined Ashish, son of Maok, the king of Gath. David and his men and their family settled there with Ashish at Gath. David brought his two wives along with him, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, Nabal's widow from Carmel. Word soon reached Saul that David had fled to Gath. So he stopped hunting for him. One day, David said to Ashes, If it is all right with you, we would rather live in one of the country towns instead of here in the royal city. So Ashes gave him the town of Ziklag, which still belongs to the kings of Judah to this day. And they lived there among the Philistines for a year and four months. David and his men spent their time reading the Geshurites, the Gizites, and the Amalekites, people who had lived near shore toward the land of Egypt since ancient times. David did not leave one person alive in the villages he attacked. He took the sheep, goats, cattle, donkeys, camels, and clothing before returning home to see King Ashish. Where did you make your raid today? Ashes would ask. And David would reply, Against the south of Judah, the Jeramelites and the Kenites. No one was left alive to come to Gath and tell where he had really been. This happened again and again while he was living among the Philistines. Ashes believed David and thought to himself, By now the people of Israel must hate him bitterly. Now he will have to stay here and serve me forever. About that time, the Philistines mustered their armies for another war with Israel. King Ashes told David, you and your men will be expected to, to join me in battle. Very well, David agreed. Now you will see for yourself what we can do. Then Ashes told David, I will make you my personal bodyguard for life. Meanwhile, Samuel had died and all Israel had mourned for him. He was buried in Ramah, his hometown, and Saul had banned from the land all land of Israel, all mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead. The Philistines set up their camp at Shunem and Saul gathered all the army of Israel and camped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the vast army, the vast Philistine army, he became frantic with fear. He asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord refused to answer him, either by dreams or by sacred lots or by the prophets. Saul then said to his advisors, find a woman who is a medium so I can go and ask her what to do. His advisors replied, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself by wearing ordinary clothing instead of his royal robes. Then he went to the woman's home at night, accompanied by two of his men. I have to talk to a man who has died, he said. Will you call up his spirit for me? Are you trying to get me killed? The woman demanded. 
You know that Saul has outlawed all the mediums and all who consult the spirits of the dead. Why are you setting a trap for me? But Saul took an oath in the name of the Lord and promised, as surely as the Lord lives, nothing bad will happen to you for doing this. Finally, the woman said, well, whose spirit do you want me to call up? Call up Samuel, Saul replied. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed, you've deceived me, you are Saul. Don't be afraid, the king told her. What do you see? I see a God coming up out of the earth, she said. What does he look like? Saul asked. He's an old man wrapped in a robe, she replied. Saul realized it was Samuel and he fell to the ground before him. Why have you disturbed me by calling me back, Samuel asked Saul. Because I'm in deep trouble, Saul replied. The Philistines are at war with me and God has left me and won't reply by prophets or dreams. So I have called for you to tell me what to do. But Samuel replied, why ask me since the Lord has left you and has become your enemy? The Lord has done just as he said he would. He has turned the kingdom from you and given it to your rival, David. The Lord has done this to you today because you refuse to carry out his fierce anger against the Amalekites. What's more, the Lord will hand you and the army of Israel over to the Philistines tomorrow, and you and your sons will be here with me. The Lord will bring down the entire army of Israel in defeat. Saul fell full length on the ground, paralyzed with fright because of Samuel's words. He was also faint with hunger, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. When the woman saw how distraught he was, she said, Sir, I obeyed your command at the risk of my life. Now do what I say and let me give you a little something to eat so you can regain your strength for the trip back. But Saul refused to eat anything. Then his advisors joined the woman in urging him to eat. So he finally yielded and got up from the ground and sat on the couch. The woman had been fattening a calf, so she hurried out and killed it. She took some flour, kneaded it into dough, and baked unleavened bread. She brought the meal to Saul and his advisors, and they ate it. Then they went out into the night. So that's the Old Testament. The reading from the New Testament is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Verse 1 to 54. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to the disciples, Let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus, has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. 
and for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go to and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word, when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die, will never ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where mother met him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave. To weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him. But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here, so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen. But some went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the leading priests and Pharisees called the high council together. What are we going to do? They asked each other. This man suddenly performs many miraculous signs. If we allow him to go on like this, soon everyone will believe in him. Then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temple and our nation. Caiaphas, who was high priest at that time, said, You don't know what you are talking about. You don't realize that it's better for you that one man should die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. He did not say this on his own 
as high priest at that time, he was led to prophesy that Jesus would die for the entire nation, and not only for that nation, but to bring together and unite all the children of God scattered around the world. So from that time on, the Jewish leaders began to plot Jesus' death. As a result, Jesus stopped his public ministry among the people and left Jerusalem. He went to a place near the wilderness, to the village of Ephraim, and stayed there with his disciples. So that's the reading from the New Testament. And the reading from the Psalms, Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For his unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. So that's the reading from the Psalms. And then the reading from the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22 to 23. Plans go wrong for lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. Everyone enjoys a fitting reply. It is wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. So that's today's Bible reading for May 20th. May the Lord God Almighty bless the reading and hearing of his word in Jesus Christ's name.